Board game boxes drive me crazy. They're either too big, too small, too ugly, or too annoying. So today, I'm gonna rank 50 board games by their boxes. Let's get into it. We're doing a classic tier ranking. Starting at the bottom, we've got Collection Ruined. These are the worst of the worst boxes, the games that you're embarrassed to have on your shelves. Then we've got Depressed Sim. If you've ever played The Sims, you know that there's a little room tracker. So if the Sim is in a room that's full of all these ugly things, then it depresses them. This is something I really notice in my wife. If, if she's in a place that she just finds ugly, that it really bums her out. And I get that with my board game shelves. If it was full of games like this, then I would be a depressed Sim. Then we've got Shame of Shelf. We've all heard of a shelf of shame. Well, these games are the shame of the shelf that they're on. Then we've got, but the gameplay is good. These are the average boxes. They're plain, bland, uninspiring, but the gameplay is good. Getting a bit better looking, we've got, you've won second prize in a beauty contest, collect 10 pounds. These are the boxes that are almost beautiful, but there's a couple of things wrong with them. Then we've got, can I get a shelfie with you? These are some beautiful boxes. They're not quite perfect, but they're almost there. And finally, we've got Hang It in the Louvre. These are the board game boxes works of art. They're the pinnacle of what you can achieve with a box. And I can assure you, not many games fit into that category. And before I start, I just wanna thank ProZD for giving me the idea for this video in the comments of my collection video. Right, let's get ranking. Starting with Catan, this is not a good looking box. The yellow and red color scheme, I'm not a fan of. This here, you've, okay, the name of the game is Catan. The name of studio is Catan. The, you've got Catan written twice on the side of your box. That is not on. I've barely touched this box. I, uh, like, this is like a new copy. It's, it's really worn already. This, I hate a number. Don't put numbers. I don't know what that is. It doesn't matter. It shouldn't be on the side of my box. I mean, the art is fine. I played the first ever German version of Catan and it had this really beautiful cover that they got rid of instantly. And if you look at the first American cover, it's like the worst imaginable board game cover you could ever think of. So this is an improvement on that. But yeah, this is going in depressing. Mysterium, I love this cover. I think that is one of the nicest board game covers there is. And then with this version, this is a newer version, they've ruined it with this horrible logo that it won a prize in 2016, the can as door. That should never be on a box. Like this is my, this is my board game and you've ruined it with some advertising. I don't need to be advertised to. I already bought the game. I like this game and you're ruining it in my collection by putting that on the front. That should be a sticker that goes on the cellophane or something that I can remove when I buy the game, not permanently on the cover of the box. If it wasn't for that logo, this would be hanging in the Louvre, but as it is, I'm gonna have to downgrade it to can I get a shelfie with you? Like almost perfect, but they had to ruin it. Bonanza, I mean, this is one of the ugliest board games in existence and they're just not helping themselves with this, I, this where you're encroaching on the artwork of the box with just this color logo thing. I hate that. Every single side of the box has this really ugly age thing and play account. That doesn't need to be on every side of the box. You can put it on one or two. The proper artwork is yellow, you know, with red writing, but this is the way to have it up on a shelf and it's green. And then this side, like why do companies bother to have this like weird upside down writing on one side? I, it's almost like to please people that have it up the other way, but who has it up the other way? That's not, that's not how it goes. To bean or not to bean, pretty terrible tagline. It's just, I mean, it's mostly, it's not even the artwork itself. I think it's something about just the, the bright yellow, but this, this has to be collection ruined. Pandemic. One of my favorite games. I used to have the original version of this, which was really ugly. And this one came out. I think I was like really impressed by how much better it looked. Some people thought that the old one looked better. They were crazy. I don't know, this character art, it's, it's not fully doing it. It almost looks like, you know, obviously it wasn't, but it kind of looks like AI art. That's how it's got this sort of softness to it. Awards down here, printed on the box. No, get rid of that. I, I don't mind the logo. 
it feels a bit dated now. There's a nice side to the box where it's just the name, bit of artwork, and like a not too annoying logo. Don't hate that. I'd say this is second prize in a beauty contest, collect £10. It's, it's not perfect, but I don't hate it. Las Vegas Royale. This is supposed to be a deluxe version of Las Vegas. I think I actually prefer the original box art. It's sort of like, oh, it's luxury because it's in black with gold, but there's just something so like 2D and basic about this art and the logo. There's just so much empty space on this box. You've got this horrific uh, information like square that feels like the intern did it. The, the logo is, uh, you've got this, the numbers, why are there numbers on the box? And then this is one of the worst things, is this whole numbered thing. This is something that Aaliyah did with a whole another line of games. This idea that, oh, you're going to want to buy every one in the line because they're numbered. Because if you've got one and four, it's not going to look right on the shelf. I mean, that is just ridiculous marketing tactic. Nobody in their right mind is going to buy all of them. So then you're just ruining the way they look on the shelf for every single person that buys your game. So yeah, absolutely hate that. There's really nothing about this to like. So collection ruined, I guess. Lost Cities. This is the updated version of this game. It's got Vincent Dutray artwork. I think it's an improvement on what was before. I really don't like this logo, the way they've got these sort of letters that, I don't know, they're like snakes or something. It's not working for me. This is a Parents' Choice Gold Award. I've never heard that. I don't know what that is. That shouldn't be on my box. Just stick it on the back. It's fine. There's loads of space. I mean, let's talk about publisher logos. First of all, don't ruin the cover of your box with a logo. Cosmos logo, I'm guessing it's from what, like the 80s or something, is one of the worst logos but just make it smaller like it doesn't need to be that big there's something about german publishers they've all got terrible logos and they insist on emblazing them everywhere uh, we've also got with the sixth expedition down here again that should be on the back of the box the other thing to talk about with lost cities is the size because this is how big it could be this is my dutch version of lost cities and all that's in this box is this deck of cards. I mean, there's a board that you, I would say you don't really need. So this is in this box. It's, it's not like the worst offender, but it's really not doing itself any favors. So we're gonna go with, while I like the artwork, I think it's letting itself down in a bunch of other places. So we're gonna go with, but the gameplay is good. I just spotted this barcode. That, no barcodes, okay? That takes it down another ranking. This is definitely shame of shelf with that barcode on the side. Okay, we're back to something that I like the look of. I think that Iberia is better looking than Pandemic. Uh, there's something about this character art I really like. The whole color scheme I'm loving. Feels like it really evokes the era and the theme. Uh, you, you know, you've got the kind of diseases up here and you've got the train down here. There's some really nice world building with the cover. I don't love that it says Limiters Collector's Edition because it's not even limited anymore. They're now just, this game is so good that they just released it as Iberia. They took the pandemic name off it. So I don't know what the new one looks like. I imagine slightly better than this one. The side of the box is nice. There's nothing offensive about this at all. So I'm going with Hang It in the Louvre. The Resistance, I've had this one for over 10 years, so it is looking a bit dated, pretty worn. I didn't hate the artwork, it gives a feel. I don't think it's high quality, but it, it gives a feel. It was always a bit weird that it was like Don Eskridge's The Resistance, because no other game does that. And at the time it was like, who's Don Eskridge? You're not Reiner Knizia, you're Don Eskridge. This here, putting your website underneath the name of your game, that's ridiculous that should never be happening. I don't want, I mean, maybe that's just indicative of the time period. It's a nice size. I I feel bad putting this right at the bottom. I'd say depressed sim with this one. Like, I'm not ashamed of it, but it could be so much better. Dominion, right. I mean, what category do you think this one deserves to go in? Look at this logo. This is a second edition. They had a chance to improve things. What is going on with this logo? Like the stretching out the O's. We're like, was someone just having fun? Like, oh yeah, maybe if we 
stretch out. Like, what is that depicting? I have no idea. The the artwork is like fine. It's like sort of faded and but this grey that's just around the whole thing. This like mottled grey and the logo. This the font and how it it doesn't like the S here doesn't quite fit on nicely. Oh, this is so so bad. This <laughs> this is kind of a different thing. Like the, the, there's just like a bit of the board game art just on the side of the box. I mean, yeah. This is collection ruined. Dominion's not actually in my collection. I've just got it in case I might use it in a video at some point. But if it was, it would have ruined my collection a long time ago. Azul must be attractive because it sold like 3 million copies, right? I, I do like the tile artwork. But this, this font here is Algerian. Go into Microsoft Office and find the font Algerian and type the word Azul and you will get this exact thing. Honestly, you need to make a papyrus sketch. You know the SNL Ryan Gosling papyrus sketch? Make it about Algerian and Azul because, like, most games have, like, they put a lot of work into the logo. I mean, apart from Dominion, but they're iconic. They, they, they look different to anything else because an artist has actually put the effort in it. And this is just a font that you can get in Microsoft Word. Um, but everything else, I don't know. It's nicely integrated. I like on the side how they've got the information, but... It doesn't feel like it's sort of annoying, like it, it fades nicely in. And even the logo is, you know, it's the company logo, but it's kind of made to look like one of the tiles. So it's not my favorite, but I'm going to give this one, can I get a shelfie with you? It's, it's a good looking box. We can't deny that. The cover of Ra is beautiful. There's no denying this Ian O'Toole artwork. I just love it. But hear me out here. I just feel like the rest of the box isn't quite doing it. First of all, this is not the deluxe version. I can't close the box properly. Like it requires so much <laughs> work to, to get it flat, the bag of tiles flat so that I can close the box. I hate a box that you can't close. Like I would say my least favorite thing in board games is boxes that are too big. And then my second least favorite thing are boxes that are trying to be like small and compact, but then you can't fit it in and it, it like, doesn't close properly, but that is somehow, maybe that's worse. But I, I like, because you were so close to getting it right, but you just didn't quite do your maths correctly. Um, also the sides, I'm not, I, so on my shelf, I either have to have this. I, I think it, part of the problem is just that it's a two letter name of a game, which I think just kind of looks a bit rubbish. So you've either got that or that, and I just don't really like either of them. And then these sides are just way too much going on. Like, we don't need to know the name of the artist and the designer there. You know, you've got it on the front. And then you've got the information and the logo and there's a bird and there's a snake and this other thing. Like, I just feel like that's too much going on. So the cover is Hang It in the Louvre, but the rest of the box is just one tier down. It's, can I get a shelfie with you? I might get some hate for this, but I don't think that Sagrada is that beautiful of a box. I do like the stained glass bits, but when I first got this game, I was like, why is it all gray? I just didn't understand it. And then I think that year I happened to go to Barcelona and see the Sagrada Familia in real life. And I was like, oh, that's why it's gray, because this cathedral is just like a, a monument to, is it granite? I don't know. It's just so gray, but with like nice, pretty stained glass windows. So thematically, the box is perfect, but it's just kind of ugly. Like I don't want this like stone gray box on my shelf. And I just feel like somehow it doesn't mesh with the beautiful colors, kind of like the cathedral itself. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's got, I don't, I, I like the sides, you know, there's not too much info, but I just, I can't look past the gray. So I'm going to give this, but the gameplay is good. Code names, my favorite game of all time. I, before I made this video last night, I was talking to my wife about it and she was like, I hate the way that code names look. You better mention that. And I, in sort of in my head, I was feeling that code names isn't that ugly. First of all, I feel like code names should win some awards for picking this size of box. It's perfect for a party game. And then loads of games have come since and copied this size. So this box 
is something of a trendsetter, but when you look at it, it's got this horrible gradient. I hate the kind of mottled thing where it's just like, ooh, it's a bit worn, the print on the font and on these things. This whole like top secret word game, that sucks. And then the silhouette, yeah, the artwork sucks. And then the CGE logo is, just, is one of the uglier logos and the way it just doesn't mesh with any of this, like the color scheme or anything. So yeah, this is not great, is it? I'm gonna go with depressed sim. It's not gonna put you in a good mood hanging out with this box. This is a travel edition of Trailblazers, a game that I recently got and I just love the packaging on this. You know, it, it's in this little case that you can take out. I assume it's waterproof, but I just love that the case itself has got like the beautiful artwork on. And then I really like the font that they've used. The, the color scheme's great. I mean, it's got a carabiner if you wanna take it with you. It all fits nicely in here. And it's just different, you know? It's not great for going on the shelf and kind of fitting in with your collection, but it really does stand out. It is a bit questionable, <laughs> this game being like in a travel edition. I mean, it's obviously small, it fits in, but it takes up a lot of table space. It's not the kind of thing that you can play on a hike or on a picnic blanket or whatever. Like you need a, a sizable table, certainly no wind or any kind of weather conditions. But you know, I feel like that's somewhat by the by because you can still take it in this case you know, to a hotel or something. And yeah, I just really like what they've done with it. So I'm gonna say, hang it in the Louvre. This is Ticket to Ride Europe, the first modern board game that I ever got. And I feel like it holds up pretty well. I It just got like a good cohesive aesthetic to it, I think. Like it's not gonna blow you away, but it's got like an old timey vibe. It's a bit, you know, washed out, I suppose. But I just like the way it all comes together. I feel like Days of Wonder, really get their boxes right. And I really like the sides of the box, like the way that you've got the trains run along here. So you've got a good idea what the game's about, you know, but just the name of the game. And then a very small company logo that just doesn't annoy too much. That's what I think they're getting right. And then I also do like where you've got like, this is a character from the game. Well, kind of, I mean, you don't play characters. And this is another character from the game. And so you can rotate the box on your shelf and have whichever, Thing that you want. I just, I like it when publishers give you options on how you're gonna display it in your collection. So I'm gonna put this one at, can I get a shelfie with you? It's clearly not the most beautiful game ever, but it really gives a sense of the game and it just looks like a really appealing package. Star Realms is one of the smallest games in this video and it gets respect for having a tiny box. I like, I massively appreciate the small packaging, but God, this is one of the ugliest games in existence. The font, this logo, like, so every game should have on the smallest side, the name of the game so that I can put it into my shelf so that all the depth of the game is in the back of the shelf and it's taking up the least amount of space on the shelf possible so I can fit in loads of games. And this just has this horrible logo or a barcode and a bunch of legal text, that is just rubbish. And then the sides, this is an advert for like the the app version of the game. And then this is a bunch of awards that it's won. Like, I hate every side of this box, even the front. I mean, the artwork of this game is just rubbish, like these icons. This, I mean, this has got to be one of the ugliest games that I own. Absolutely collection ruined. And it, it's a shame because it packs a lot of game into a tiny box, but, even with this tiny box that has such a small footprint on my shelf, it manages to ruin the entire collection. Okay, change of heart. This is getting downgraded to second place in a beauty contest, collect 10 pounds. There's no way that this is on a par with Ra and Azul. This is on a par with Pandemic. Quinto is so ugly. What, I don't think you should make a game that is just all white. It's starting to really collect dirt. And then you've got a tagline, the new sensation from Quix. What if you don't know what Quix is? The font, I hate. But the fact that they've made this win red, as if like the name means something. It, what, that's why they called it Quinto, because it's got win in it. But why the, the T-O? I, I, honestly, I have no idea the name. It's, it just looks so cheap. And this looks like a, a mass market game from like the 80s or 90s. And it's actually great, but you'd never know. Uh, this has got to be collection ruined. 
Okay, so here's a small game that gets it right. I mean, the, just something about the color choice with A Fake Artist Goes to New York. It just pops on the shelf. This is a newer version. Originally, you couldn't get the box open, uh, but now they've put the little divot, so it's actually mm, somewhat easy to get the box open. I mean, you could question the size in that, like, you've got to really pack it in. It's not as bad as some Oink games for, like, getting everything back into the box. You know, I do, I love the Oink aesthetic, so they will do well in terms of boxes, but there's one thing that really bugs me about Oink games, and that is that they don't put the name of the game on any of the sides of the box. I, I'm not going to have it on my shelf like this. Nobody is doing that. So then I'm either going to have it like this, 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 or this, and the, the name isn't there. So then I guess I just have to know which game it is from the color. Um, so yeah, I hate that. And really, I think that's costing it a place in the top spot. This has to be, can I get a shelfie with you? Because you've got to put the name on the side of the box. Otherwise, I don't know what game it is. Lords of Vegas is one of my favorite games of all time, but it is so ugly. I'm so ashamed of this box. Like, you've got the... This is just word art. Like, do people still do... Is word art still a thing? Like, from Microsoft 98? Uh, with, like, a drop shadow? This is so bad. Uh, roll the dice and build paradise. Hate that. There's a number on the front of my box. Get that. Get rid of that. Why are there just, like, random cards from the game? More numbers, more taglines. There's a different tagline here. Dust, dice, dollars. That doesn't mean anything to me. It's also just a really bad quality box. And I mean, I haven't even talked about this terrible artwork. I know there's a new version coming out. I mean, the whole game is hideous. They need to update everything about it. So yeah, collection ruined, but brilliant game. I just remembered something I hate about the resistance. And that is that it's got adverts on the inside of the box. Like, I have paid for this game. Please stop advertising to me. Like, yeah, oh, okay, you can't see it when the box is closed, but I can see it. I have to open the box every time I play the game. I don't want to buy your other games, some of which are probably not in print anymore because this is like 10 years ago now. I hate that so much. Like, you have sold me a game. It's not an opportunity to advertise to me more. And if you really have to, then just put it in a little pamphlet that I can throw out as soon as I get the game. So because of that, collection ruined. I feel like I should hate Carcassonne more than I do. This, I mean, it's obviously got this very dated aesthetic, but it's set in a dated time, right? Over 12 million games sold. I don't care. Don't put that on my box. The artwork is weirdly, like, fuzzy, as if they've, like, blown up uh, an image like, it's almost like someone took over the company and, like, they didn't have the right files, so they used an old JPEG and they had to, like, enlarge it beyond the resolution that it was capable of. Because you could just kind of see this... It just doesn't look right, you know, like when you make an image too big. Put on the side, like, the shape of a meeple, which, I don't know, I just the whole, like, getting... Oh, we did meeples and making everything a meeple, I... I kind of hate that, but I do like the font. I think it's, and I, I like the kind of iconic C thing here. So I I don't, I feel like P, other people will hate this, but I don't think it's that bad. So I'm going to stick this in, but the gameplay is good. This is my kind of cover, trekking through history. I just love the way that they've combined loads of the artwork from the game, the color scheme, just feels like a really iconic cover that it like really stands out to me. The logo down here, it just all comes together. I like the way that it's kind of showing you a clock. I, I think they've updated this now and it looks worse to me, but I don't know, I, I don't have that. What I love about this one as well is that they have followed the actual old rule. At least one of the sides should just have some nice artwork and the name of the game. There's no logo, there's no information, play account, nothing. That every single box should have one of these sides, if not like three or four of them. You know, because you can you can have your rubbish side that I'm never going to show with your information. I don't really get the having one that's just artwork. I That is weird to me. Like, I need to know the name of the game for it to be a board game shelf. But maybe some people are into it. But I'm not... I'm not marking it down for that. This one is Hang It in the Louvre. It's a classic. The Quest for El Dorado has some really nice artwork. This is the second edition. 
they got the artwork redone by Vincent Dutre, and I do prefer this version. I, I love that cover. I like the the logo choice. I don't love that there's it's in English and French. I don't know, that just feels a bit weird to me. I, it's like a money-saving thing. I think artwork-wise is on the verge of Hang It in the Louvre, but the Ravensburger logo, oh my God. What a curse on board gamers across the world. One of the biggest companies one of the worst logos, just this bright blue that doesn't go with anything. And just to rub it in on every single side of the box, Ravensburger logo. Oh, Ravensburger logo in a different direction. And here it is, and it's not a triangle anymore. It's taking up even more space as a square and a square. Oh, and there's a barcode. So, you know, you did a great job. You recommissioned the artwork and made the game look better within, but the box is just not cutting it. So. I'm gonna say this one is, can I get a shelfie with you? Oh boy, someone should study Queen Games' obsession with yellow. Like what, it, and it's just, this color of yellow, it has no place in any board game collection, and yet every single Queen Games is emblazoned with that color. This is Luxor, just one of the many examples. I, I don't, like, I don't hate what they're trying to do with the cover, but I just feel like uh, it's just too, it's too yellow, don't love the logo. This, it was nominated for the Spiel de Jahres. Great, it didn't win. It definitely shouldn't be that big, let alone on the front cover. Queen Games logo, I, it's not, I don't know. I don't hate it as much as others, but they've got the Spiel de Jahres there again. And really, it's just that yellow. It just, there's something about it. It just makes me want to go to sleep and it doesn't make it look like a fun game. This is collection ruined all day. And I feel like so many Queen games are like that. And of course, it's a great game. It doesn't deserve it. I've got mixed feelings about Love Letter. I do like the bag. It's like thematic, it's a bit different, but on the shelf, there's it doesn't really stand out. There's no name or anything like that. And then the thing that I really hate is that the tokens fall out of the bag. I've lost these tokens like in my rucksack when I've taken it out. So that, gets it marked down. I think it's a good look and I love that it's small. So this one I think is second place in a beauty contest, collect 10 pounds. I've had a lot to say about Zuvardis. The anthropomorphic animals are not doing it for me, but I do really like the art of Quan Chai Moria. He's one of my favorite artists in board games. And so it, it's sort of like, oh, why couldn't you have just commissioned him to do something different? The thing that I want to talk about today is the fact that in my collection video, people were like, why is Zuvardis upside down? Because I wasn't given an option. I wanted to have the box like this way up and the text is the wrong way up. And the low, like, so if I, that is how you should have a box so that you can read the text like that, which puts the company logo upside down and this ibis upside down. And there's no option on the other side because they wasted this side with all this information that I don't want, I don't need that. If I have it like this, then I can get around it, but nobody has it this way up, I swear. If you do, let me know in the comments. But, so, Zuvardis, it's gonna be, but the gameplay's good. This is the second edition of Fugitive. The first one had quite a nice box, but this, is even smaller. I mean, you just can't, I can't get over this flap. You know, magnetic flaps in board game boxes are amazing. And then the fact that it's got this like cut off thing. Oh uh, yeah, it's, that's just, that's winning at so many awards. The original version didn't have it. it. does have the name written on the smallest side, but I kind of wish it was like a thicker font or something. You can't really see it. But aside from that, I love the artwork from Ryan Goldsbury. I love the size, so small, even smaller than the first edition. So Fugitive is hang it in the Louvre. I've just got this new version of Through the Desert. I used to have the big Fantasy Flight version, which comes in like a Ticket to Ride size box. So the fact that All Play have put it in this size box, I was at first really impressed with. I like the new look of it. It's like not too offensive on the side here. I, I don't really like this whole logo thing. This is verging into Ravensburger territories. You really don't need to be doing that. But the issue with Through the Desert is that in the same Kickstarter, they released this expansion 
And it comes in, you know, one of these like tatty boxes that you're obviously not meant to keep it in. So it's meant to go in here, except I can barely fit the base game stuff in here. I try putting this stuff in here, the box won't close, you know, and that is just so annoying. When you've sold them at the same time, it's different if, you know, the expansion comes two years later. This isn't a box. It has to fit into this box and it doesn't. So that is depressed sim for me, despite how good it looks. There's nothing more depressing than not being able to fit your own game into a box. And we're not talking about sleeves or anything that where you've like brought it upon yourself. This is like how the game was made and it doesn't go in the box. A Game of Thrones board game. I've had this one for years. I still really like the way it looks. I feel like old school Fantasy Flight, they had a real era of making nice looking boxes. You know, they pack a lot into it. It's not like, well, some of them were definitely weren't using up all the space, things like Mission Red Planet. But something like Game of Thrones, there's a lot in here. And this is bulging because I've got sleeves and geek boxes and expansions in here. So I can't blame Fantasy Flight. I like their logo. I like that it's small, like on the side of the box, it just doesn't, it doesn't take up much space and it, it just kind of feel like it fits. Another thing I really like is that on each side, you've got a different character. So there's like the Hound and uh, I think that's Jon Snow. Um, I like the art on the front. The logos, it feels a bit dated now, but I, I'm gonna say if this was new and fresh and not faded, hang it in the Louvre. Dead of Winter is one of my favorite boxes of all time. It's just something like the logo really captures the feel of the game. I love the artwork from Fernando Suarez. I think probably my favorite art in a game because of just how like the characters come alive. I feel like very few games focus so well on their characters. I really like the way they've just like made it seem like this is a game about characters, which it so is. Um, and then the sides of the box, you know, there's there's one little logo that I feel like has been nicely integrated. And then, you know, the name of the game. Kind of wish there was some, maybe some characters on the side, but obviously they've got the zombies instead. So it does kind of work. So yeah, this is Hang It in the Louvre. I, I love this one. This is the new version of No Thanks. And the thing that I hate about it the most is how much bigger it is than the original version. This is an older version that I have. Look, what is this like? four times the size. I mean, I actually prefer the new look, but on the side of the box, there's just so much going on. If anything, it's gonna depress a sim. It's, you try and get a new copy of a game and it's four times the size of an old one. So, depress sim. Very few games look as nice as the crypto. Like, I feel like it doesn't really look like a party game. So it's almost letting itself down in that respect, but it's just got such a nice aesthetic, like, this cover just comes together in such a great way. They almost mess it up. Like this side of the box, that's useless to me. This, uh, I don't love. This is crazy. It's got like warning choking hazard. It's got the contents on the side. Put that on the back, that's wild. But it, it does save itself with this one. This is the one that you have on display. So I think this one has to be hang it in the Louvre. It's just too nice. Waterfall Park was in my collection video and I couldn't get the box closed again. It just, there's something about the way this insert is designed that all the stuff just falls out when you try and hold it upright. And any game, especially when they've put thought into the insert, there's ways to store the stuff, but they haven't put enough thought in. So this happens. That is just totally unforgivable. I hate that so much. And yet, you know, the look is fine. Like, it's a really weird depiction of the game. You know, Waterfall Park is a negotiation game. There's sort of money and deals going on. This doesn't give that at all. It's just like this bright, colorful thing. So I don't really feel like it matches the game, but obviously it's not like horrific to look at. And then the side of the box, they've, they've almost got it right. Like the fact that it's just the name, no logos or anything. But I actually feel like the new rule is that it's not its not just the logo, but there needs to be a bit of a vibe of the game behind. It can't just be like a plain color. The fact that the box won't close is the, the biggest problem. And this one is going on shame of shelf. Because if it's taking up that much space on its shelf, then of course it's the shame of the shelf. This is Castles of Burgundy special edition. This is the answer to the fact that everyone thinks that Castles of Burgundy one of the ugliest games ever, especially the inside of the game. I, I think the original cover is sort of okay on like a Carcassonne level. They made a special edition. 
and they didn't exactly get it perfect. You know, the art, the front cover art is fine. The fact that it's like special edition, I don't know, that just feels a bit weird. Like, just give me the name of the game. But the box is ridiculous. Uh, absolute least favorite trend of modern times with boxes is this whole like fat box thing going on. The fact that it's like, th th there's just a certain ratio that it should be. It should be wide and long with a bit of thickness. These like super thick ones that take up so much space on your shelf. I hate, I just hate them. Like, and, and they just look really, like, what is this? What, like, why is it just a tiny logo in the middle and then nothing else? Like, this is supposed to be a special edition and this is how it looks on my shelf. That is insane to me. And then that's the other side. Those are your two options. Like you've commissioned so much nice artwork in this game. That, you know, the whole point of a special edition is that you redid all the artwork of a really ugly game. So where is that artwork on the sides of the box that are gonna be on my shelf? Uh, you know, not to mention the fact that it's just totally overblown size, cramming in so much stuff. Um, I don't know with this one, like, you know, on one hand, it looks nice in, but it looks nice, but it's just too big, you know? I honestly think this is shame of shelf. Like I'm embarrassed to have a game of this size for, you know, for what it is inside. I'm not gonna talk about Foundations of Rome today, but Foundations of Rome on a similar level, but there's just something about the side here that's just really bugging me. This is great. Heat pedal to the metal. I love the like the speed thing going on. There's just something about the the art style of this cover that just really brings the game alive. I love the like f the flames. Like I I really feel like the difference uh, a lot of the times between a great cover and a weak one is they put enough effort into the logo, but also the integration. You know, it's not just about okay, you've got one good bit of art that you've just put on the cover, but how does the logo fit in with that? How does the company logo and the name of the designers fit in? And this just has been properly brought together. And that's the difference. On the side, I don't really need the designer names. I don't mind, you know, this logo nice and in the corner, doesn't get in the way. All of the sides are the same, which is maybe a bit dull, but for me, and. It's thicker than I'd like, but it's because it's storing the cards upright and making like a really organized system inside with the insert. So I, I can't hate it too much for that. Hang it in the Louvre with this one. Yeah, this is Burgle Brothers, although you wouldn't know from a lot of the sides of the box. You have to like turn it to this side to see the name of the game. I love the creativity. It's made to look like the building that you're heisting and you use it in the game. You know, you've got the helipad on the top. So this, you end up at the top of this helipad. So I do appreciate that. And I think when I got it, I I love it more than I do now. It's just the fact that it's always sat on my shelf, either it's just showing a helipad, what game is that? Or this, which is just terrible. Um, you, you know, nobody's gonna have it on its shelf like this. And I don't love, I never love a game where you can kind of see the, the bit sticking out where it doesn't look like it's closed properly, even though that is intentional. The the artwork inside I love, and I, I, I love the theme thing, but for me, I'm giving this one second place in a beauty contest, collect 10 pounds. It's, it's, it's close, but it's not quite right. You know, points for size for sure, but it doesn't come together. I'm really torn with Forbidden Desert because I know everyone hates tins and I used to really hate tins. But I don't know, I've, I've kind of, maybe I, I wouldn't say grown to love them, <laughs> but I've grown to not hate them. They're just kind of different, they stand out. I think the, the main issue I have with tins is the, the fact that they fall open. So it depends how they're kind of constructed inside, how much is in there, but also something about the tightness. <laughs> and then if you can dent them, you know, that is, that is one of the major flaws. But I do like the way this is embossed. I like the art on the Forbidden series and I really like the font that they use. I don't love the sides here though. Like the logo, I don't know, this gray again, just really generic information and it's exactly the same on every side so I don't have an option. How, like, how am I displaying that so it looks nice in my collection? So yeah, I don't know. I think, I think this one is veering into shame of shelf and I think all tin haters out there will probably agree with me. 
Just One is an incredible party game, but God, it could come in a better box. I don't know. I mean, it's sold a lot of copies. It's done really well. So is there something about this that speaks, oh, this must be a good party game? Because I just don't see it. But I also don't know how I would market this game. I love the box size, code names, you know. But on my shelf, this is how it looks. With the world's tiniest logo just down this end, you know, company logo. What is going on? Like, why can't I just have like a big just one written here? That is, that is what the side of the box should be. It just looks so weird on my shelf. And then the color palette is just this beige thing with these flex. I don't know. There's just very little to like about this. I'm, I think it's got to be depressed sim. It, it, it's bumming me out. I love the aesthetic of the Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detectives series. This whole draw thing, I, you know, there's question marks. I've, I've never had it fall out, you know, because I, I, well, I suppose I do keep them up like this. this it's just something, it's, it's like well constructed, it's a really sturdy box. So it doesn't fall apart like other ones. I love the like shiny embossed uh, magnifying glass. I love the font choice. On the sides may be like a bit boring, but you know, I like that you can line them up and they kind of look a bit like books. Ah, I don't know. I think I stick with my guns. I think hang it in the Louvre. I think this is a work of art and especially when they're together, there's just something really nice about them. I like the vibe of Cascadia. This landscape, it, it I don't know, it feels like calming or soothing or something. And it, and it evokes the game. I feel like the artwork's a bit generic. I mean, maybe that's because we see Beth Sobel art everywhere, but it's not that I don't like it. I just feel like there's games with covers that I prefer. It just feels a bit easy. Oh, we stick a deer in front of a mountain. And the font with this like whole faded out thing, that feels lazy. That feels like, I feel like that's just a font in Microsoft Word and you've just spaced out the things a bit. I don't know, I'm not vibing with that massively. And on the side, with these two logos. Don't give me two logos. You know, n neither of them are like nicely integrated or anything. So, solid art, but I, I was gonna go, can I have a shelfie? But the more I talk about it, I'm talking myself into second prize in a beauty contest, collect 10 pounds. I, it's in the background of my shop, but when I look up close, I don't know. I don't know if it's all that. Also from my backdrop is Parks. I mean, this is one of the best looking covers in board games. And I, I do really like the font and this kind of whole like gold thing at the top. It just, it gels really nicely. I mean, the, the art in this game generally is just amazing. But there's no side of the box with just Parks written on it. I mean, like this way. You've got a tiny little parks down there. And I, I, I guess that's because they're like really pushing the artwork in this game. But if it's on my shelf, I need like, it just doesn't fit in if it doesn't have like a proper logo. I'm gonna go, can I get a shelfie with you? Like artwork wise, brilliant, but box wise, it could do better. I've talked a lot about the artwork in Libertalia Windsor Galecrest. The cover, it just doesn't evoke the game. This is not a game of exploration. This is a game of backstabbing pirates. And this isn't doing it. This box is covered in logo. Okay, so we've got the info there. This is the 239th game from 2,500 games. I don't care. Don't tell me this information. What? It's part of the first printing. Like, really, I... Like, how many people care that they've got a copy from the first printing? This isn't Hemingway. This is a board game that is just going to vanish and be reprinted with different artwork in 10 years. Logo, logo, here on the side of the box. Every side of the box has got three different info, one logo, another logo, both doing the same thing. Then we've got the Otama factory. Every single side of the box is like that. It's bright and colorful. It's, it's not hideous but it's just annoying and it there's just no side of the box that I want to display on my shelf. So this is shame of shelf, like can do better. Skull is beautiful, yeah? Like amazing weird artwork in this game and just perfectly shown on the front box. I like the logo, I like the color. They did a pink version I'm not so keen on. This cover is hang it in the Louvre, but 
the thing that bugs me is there's only one side of the box with the name of the game on and it's got a barcode on it. Like what, what is going on? Just, uh, you don't need a barcode on the side, but just put it on this side with all the crap on it or put it on the back. But you put it there. This is the only way that I can have it on my shelf and there's a barcode on my shelf. Like that is just totally unforgivable. If it wasn't for that, it'd be at the top. But as it is, can I get a shelfie with you? But disappointed whilst I'm getting that shelfie. Fantasy Realms is never gonna win any awards for looking nice. I don't know what it is about printing techniques, but this is just really worn. It's such an uninspired look. And it's not like covered in logos. Actually, the information is sort of fairly well integrated here, like kind of hidden. There is one side that is just, so I don't hate that. There is a side that has like choking hazard. Not sure that needs to be on the side of the box. It's, it's really just the art bringing this one down. I, I think just looking at it bums me out. This is depressing. I used to kind of like the aesthetic of Detective, but it really is just a picture of a road with a blue filter on it. I don't know, I feel like they're somehow getting away with it, but this version here with this Game of the Year edition, it's like, wow, so you won loads of awards. Why is Why does that have to be my problem? Why is it like on the front of my box so that it's ruining my collection. What I do appreciate here that I, you don't see done very often is that on the side of the box is the Portal Games logo and they've changed the look of it, the colors of it to fit the aesthetic of the game. You know, normally the Portal Games logo is like a bright red, so it would just really stand out. That is good, that is modesty. I really appreciate that. And they do have a side of the box that is just no logos, just the name of the game, but it's just kind of got like a really boring background to it. So it doesn't look that nice, but it doesn't, you know, ruin the collection either. So I think with this one, it's somewhere in the middle, but the game plays good, but the box <sighs> could be better. The only thing I like about Clank is the logo. I feel like they got that right. They commissioned someone good for the logo and then the rest of the art they did on the cheap. Nothing about this cover that works. These two company logos they just stand out so much and then this a game by Paul Denon has just so clearly been put on right at the last minute like there's just no effort for that font or anything for it to go it's really bad quality as well like it's really worn down this game uh, none of the sides of the box are at all attractive save for the logo it's a really like poor quality box that you just know that you could rip with like absolutely no effort at all. I honestly think this one deserves collection ruined. Yeah. Valbara breaks two cardinal rules. First of all, the smallest side doesn't have the name of the game on it. It has all this pointless information that could be on the back. This, like, how am I having it in this shelf? It's, it's forcing this whole, like, bookshelf thing, but that is taking up way too much space to hold it vertically. And then even then, there's not the name of the game, like the proper way, it's like this tiny little thing, just so that it matches the rest of their games like this. And then it's got this draw that just falls out way too easily, which means if you don't have the tokens in baggies, like I've actually had them, because there's this big hole here, so the tokens just like fall out into your bag. Nice artwork, and I, I actually really like the logo of this one. Nice small box but absolutely ruined by just like a couple of things. So this is so close to ruining my collection, but as it is, it's just depressing me. Yeah, depressing. Onitama is different, you know, not many games are this kind of long and thin. I don't know if I love that. I tend to like sort of specifically square or rectangular boxes, things that don't mesh with other games in my collection kind of frustrate me at times, but it is to fit in, you know, a really nice play mat that kind of brings the game to life. So maybe I'll let it off. It does have a magnetic clasp. What I like here is that the logos have been made to fit the aesthetic of the game. They're not just like thrown on there in their usual style. So I appreciate that. I like the logo. Ah, the beige is a bit dull. And then when you have it on your shelf, it kind of looks like this. It doesn't really stand out that much, but I'm saying second place in a beauty contest, collect 10 pounds. Like it's got a nice aesthetic, this game, but I don't know if the box fully sells it. I want to do these together. This is Watergate and Match of the Century because they're clearly from the same line of games. Don't like the font. The covers, I just feel like there's not enough going on. Like you can see like a little glimpse of Richard Nixon and a little sort of sense of chess. 
but you know, make sure that you can see our logos. And it's funny because this one is Capstone Games, bright red thing standing out. This one, they've actually, this is the Frosted Games logo. It actually fades in. It's usually blue, but it kind of fits in with the aesthetic. So that's kind of weird that one company's done the right thing and the other not. Um, but when I really hate it is when you put them together in your collection and it doesn't match. Now the info matches and even just the Capstone Games logo doesn't match. It's way bigger and even brighter on this one. That's ridiculous. Like don't have a line of games if there's not going to be any continuity. And like I'm picking on these guys. Honestly, there's loads of games in my collection that do this exact thing. It's just crazy. Like, what, did you just lose the files or something? You can't just repeat the same thing again. Like, it's your line of game. So I'm sure that you can ha I, I can't provide the continue. I, like, <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, it's so easy, you know, to have consistency. Although, please, look back through my old videos. I'm sure there's no consistency. But when you've got it on a shelf, for the rest of your life, because your games are that good, there needs to be some consistency in your logos. I mean, this is clearly depressing me, but I don't, I don't know if it's that bad. I, I'm, I'm gonna say, this is shame of shelf. You know, if this is happening on your shelf, you're embarrassed about it. It's, it's bumming you out. Like, people are coming around your house and they're going, "What? Why don't they match, John?" Like. What's wrong with your board game collection? Well, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I'm doing my best. I had people in the comments in my collection video worried that I hadn't noticed that Secret Hitler sticks out of my shelf. I've noticed, I absolutely hate it. I just, <laughs> I just don't wanna talk about every single game that sticks out, but this is way too long for a board game. Like, you're just trying to get attention, and I guess in a way I've given it to you, but this is the wrong kind of attention. I hate, that they made this game this long. And I hate that the cover doesn't have the name of the game on it. That's ridiculous. Don't act like that, that's bad behavior. You know, nice aesthetic, it's very different. You know, aside from the fact it's way too long, it is, you know, relatively modest, although could be smaller. This has to be shame of shelf because it's embarrassing the rest of its shelf. It's making it look bad by sticking out like that on a bookcase that has got so much depth. You couldn't ask for a bookcase with more depth. I don't know how deep a calyx is, but there's no way that this fits on a calyx without having to like go through the back and then you've got to have it away from the wall. That's just like, no, just stop it, okay? And I'm not having your game like this. Games aren't meant to be kept horizontally, so take your punishment and do better next time. This is Deception Murder in Hong Kong. It's actually the expansion box. And that's my first problem is that the original game was even bigger than this. And this is a social deduction party game thing. They shouldn't come in boxes this big, okay? So this is too big of an ego for a game of that style. But I do like the vibe, I do like the artwork. I mean, so many logos. How many companies worked on this game there's a Dice Tower seal of approval and then a Dice Tower award from 2015. I'm gonna make a, 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 a maybe promise here, which is, <laughs> as far as I know, there is no actual LOL logo, because there isn't really an actual LOL logo, on any box in existence. And nobody's offered it. But I really don't want it to be on boxes. Like, if someone said, can I put it on the back of a box because you recommended this game, I'll say yes. But if they say, can I put it on the front of a box? I'm really gonna try and say no, because I don't agree with it, regardless of the channel. I just think it's it's damaging the look of our game. So maybe I'll stick to that, I'll let you know. On the side here, we've got a perfect side of a box. There's no logos, there's no Dice Tower logos. There's just the name of the game and a nice bit of artwork. So that is winning it points. I think this is, Second prize in a beauty contest, collect 10 pounds. So that is the final ranking. And I feel like I might've been too generous because there's more games in the top tier than any other tier. But let me know which games you think I got in the wrong tier. And if you've got games that you think ruin your collection or should be hung in the Louvre, then let me know. And if you've got ideas for more videos like this, let me know in the comments. If you like this video, 
please subscribe to the channel to see more videos like it. I'm John Perkis. Thanks for watching.